Good morning. I'm just finishing up washing my hands because uh, we're going to be working with our dough, uh, making it into loaves. Um, didn't have great success with the white, which I knew my, my uh, starter was not very active. Um, anytime you get your hands clean and got to put them in something, your nose always itches. So I always I use the back of my hand because I don't get that in the dough. But anyway, seems like it always happens. My white, well, let me show you my wheat. Take this off. My wheat did really good. My whole wheat. Oh, it smells good. This is it. And it's definitely doubled. It's, it looks very, very good. I'm going to do it last. I'm going to set it aside. Now, here's my white, which I knew my starter did not look good. It wasn't bubbly and like I said I truly believe it's because of the quality of flour I was using because it's not good quality so anyway what you do uh, well now do it for the farmers market I used my oil but today I'm using butter because I'm gonna be working with my wheat and we use butter we don't use uh, vegetable oil but I'm just gonna see how this feels the texture of the dough is good but I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't know if it rose at all. I'm gonna put it into loads and see what happens. It won't hurt. All it's gonna cost me is a little oil um, and a little Pam. Now, if it does not rise up, y'all, I'm gonna chunk it. In fact, this is kinda of stick. I've never used butter on my hands to do the sourdough. It's kinda of sticking. I'm gonna get some oil out and see if that helps. And it may just be that dough because it didn't do like it was supposed to. So you're quite, and, and if you're wondering about my farmer's market, how come it does, it's because I do use yeast in it. And I'm gonna put this on the counter where you can see what I do. You can't really see in that bowl. Um, you always wanna have oil where it doesn't stick. And it's, this is the way it looks, it just looks like this. And I, I, I eyeball it, this was, this, uh, Dough is enough for three loaves, so I'm going to cut it into thirds. Now, I have, there's my three loaves. I just kind of look at it and eye it to see. And then I've decided I'm going to make a loaf of bread, regular sourdough bread, make a loaf of cinnamon bread, and I'm going to do a, well, let's see. That's right. This will make two pans of rolls. Um, it, it makes uh, 12 rolls is the way I do it on here. Like, or, and even I want to show you too. Well, I'll show you with the other flour about the little loaves. Anyway, so it will make six rolls. And these are the pans that I use for the farmer's market. And I put the, I spray, I call all this stuff pan. This is great value canola oil spray. But I just call it all Pam because that's what the original one was. So, and I give that a good coating of that. Come on here, huh, Tommy? It's yeah, sure. I'm. I'm trying to do something. I'm. I'm trying to get this video on my iPad as well, so I can respond to the chat. Okay. Can I? Can you put it where I can see where I can make sure they're seeing? Yeah. Give me one second. I'm. Uh, I'm going to shape the loaves, and I'm going to show you. Um, the way you do it. Let me see. You can get a dark background, but you kind of curl it in like that. And the bottom is going to look a little ugly. But as you curl it. I'm trying to do something. I'm, oops, I'm sorry. sorry to get this video. <laughs> He's listening to his video too. <laughs> and then I get it uh, like, like this, and I set it in the pan. And if this were to rise correctly, which I have my doubts, it will rise up, up, make a little dome, and go all the way to the end. So we'll see. Now we're all going to do the cinnamon bread, but I'm going to set that dough to the side because I'm going to do my rolls first where I won't get the counter with cinnamon on it and have to clean it. And what I'll do, um, it makes 12 rolls, so I, I just 
do this in my head. I just split it in half and I say this is six and six. Then I do three and three, three and three. Keep your hands good and oiled. And then I know each one of these little pieces are three. <laughs> we tree buns, I pulled an all nighter to get caught up on the series. Oh no. <laughs> Said we'll be going to bed after this. Oh my goodness. Wow. And again, the reason I did the white flour is because I know that there are some people that, that don't do whole wheat, that they do use the white. And so I just wanted to show the difference, which on this one, it was kind of a failure because my starter just really wasn't good. Oh, I'm sorry. And all hands, just roll it around. I'm sorry I get to going so fast and kind of, where it'll be kind of smooth. I, this is, I like to use these pans for the farmer's market. I've showed y'all the bags that I use, and this will look like a flower, you know, a six petal, a five petal flower. And so I just think it makes a pretty presentation. So, and I just set them. And these pans will be thrown away this year because, you know, I get new pans each year, but I really like the ease of using these pans. And usually these pans I get more than a year out of. And sometimes I have uh, egg custards that may not sell, and I sell them in this pan. And after we eat the egg custards, then <clears throat> I'll save the pan to use for these rolls. So I don't always have to buy them. I'm going to experiment for just a second and turn this overhead light off. I want to see how that affects because it almost looks like it's like washed out. There's so much of reflection on uh, the pan. And yeah. And you see, <clears throat> that's how I do the rolls like that. And we're just, we're looking for these to, to just about double, double or just about double in size. Like I said, I'm not holding my breath on my white flour. I know I didn't have a good starter. And I was asking Tom this morning, I said, well, what should I do? Should I just scrap it? And he's like, well, what would you tell them to do? Because, I mean, I just plan on giving this bread away. It's not for us to eat. And I was like, well, I would tell them to try it because they've already got all their ingredients in there. So gotcha. I'm going ahead and doing it. So That didn't hardly affect it at all, but I'm going to leave it like that. Anyway, this is uh, two tablespoons of sugar and one teaspoon of cinnamon. We're making cinnamon bread. I'm sorry I didn't talk to you about that. You just flatten it out like this. And I think, really, somebody had asked um, when you would put the raisins and I think I would put them now and kind of gently, not squish them all the way in, but just kind of pat them to where they're there. They're not going to go anywhere. And then you take your cinnamon. And, you know, it just depends on how much you want to use, how much you want of cinnamon on there. I forgot I was doing the two cinnamon breads, so. Tell me when you can feel the question. Wait, let me, let me get this done up. Um, and so that's it. I mean, you can get it closer to the edge like that. And then you just take it jelly roll style. I'm gonna try and let me, um, I was gonna do it like this. And I just fold it over it looks good. like looks this, good. start like that. And just, it don't have to be neat. It's gonna rise up. Just roll it up like that. You want your bottom. Here's my bottom. I'm gonna kind of pinch it a little bit but I'm gonna put it on the bottom. My little, my, where I'm joining it together, I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the pan, like that. And you see, it's in there. And what I'll do is I'll take a little cinnamon and sugar and sprinkle it on top. So, and again, you can it. do that as, you know, you can put that as heavy as you want it. Right, well, and the main reason I sprinkle it on top is for the farmer's market because I am scared, so scared in, in bagging things rather quickly that I'm going to uh, bag, put it in the wrong bag, put the wrong label on it. So I want to make sure I can tell my cinnamon bread from the other bread. Now I'm going to clean my counter because um, I'm going to, uh, I don't want to get cinnamon on my regular bread that I'm making. So. Sam's is wondering, it's just, uh, I said, I would like to feed with just water and flour for one feeding and flour, sugar, and water for the next. Does anyone think or have experience with doing that? You know, you know, Tim, the reason I tried doing the starter with no sugar is because most of the recipes I see has no sugar. And so I thought, you know, that, 
I would like to use less sugar in our diet. And I thought, well, let me try it. I've never done that before and mine failed. But I really think doing the every other would work. And you know what you can do? You can try it one time. What's wrong? You got sourdough in your hair. <laughs> People know when I've been working because I make a mess. But um, anyway, you could do it for one feeding. I don't think it's going to affect it that bad. Watch it where you can see if it's, if it's still being active or not. If it's not as active, then maybe you want to go back. And you could reduce the sugar some if you wanted to. So, okay, now that's done. Give me another paper towel. Well, uh, Family Roots Farm says, and I'm assuming Family Roots, you're going to have to uh, clarify to make sure that I'm right about what I think you mean. As I was rolling my bread under, it kept on cracking on the top. Any suggestions? I'm assuming they're talking about during the kneading process no maybe when she's shaping the loaf maybe we need to know um what you mean by that we, uh, specify when what you mean by rolling your bread when you were doing that and uh, and then patty will address it okay let's see i'm gonna make 12 rolls of the wheat on that pan. How much raisin would you generally use? I would say to taste, maybe? Yeah, just or? whatever, you, what, just think you're gonna be slicing it and it's gonna be in a swirl in the middle. So, I mean, I would think, I don't know. I mean, a fourth of a cup, I would think would be a fair amount. I would try to start out with like a fourth of a cup, just like a little handful, and sprinkle it on there and see what you think. Because if you like the raisins, you're going to want to, you're going to want raisins in every slice. You may not want it, you know, raisins coated the whole swirl, but you're going to want, you know, if you like raisins. So. Family, Family Roots Farm issue, uh, you're right, when shaping the loaf, it was cracking on top when she fold, when they folded it under. Okay. Too, um, too it, dry, huh? it, I'm thinking that it's too dry. Um, And are, are you using oil on your hands or flour? Because that will make a difference too. A lot of people shape their dough with flour and you're going to see cracking. Um, make sure you have oil on your hands and if, and, and if it just continues to do that, I would still put it in my pans. I mean, there are some people that put their dough, and I used to do this because I didn't know how to shape bread. They, you know, put their piece of dough and push it down. Push it down, and that's and then you know when it rises up, it's going to be more of a flat top than a rounded top, and you know the rounded top just is a is a better presentation of bread. It doesn't have to have a round top, um, but Aunt Dossie is the one that showed me how to shape the bread uh, and make it have the round top and everything. So you know if that's continued to be an issue, if the oil on the hands don't help, you may have put a little too much flour in it. Um, and I would just go ahead and put it in your pan and maybe just with an old hand, just kind of pat it down like that. So. And, uh, they were talking amongst themselves about following the recipe. So it's important, again, to say that the recipe is a basic rule of thumb. But each starter, you ha you'll you get used to the feel of it. Um, yeah. You know, wh and, when you need to add a little less flour or a mm -hmm. little more flour based on the consistency of it. Mm -hmm. Now, you see... You if you can see how it's risen up good and fluffy, this is much better. And I'm gonna, I'm just rolling it to me and pushing it down like that. Let me. Make sure you clean your counter. <laughs> yes. Okay, here's my little thing and I'm gonna split it up into threes again. Yep, they have all on their hands when they're doing that. So. Okay, I'm thinking it's a little too much flour. I found a little hard something. You know what this is? This is so, a little bit of my uh, <laughs> uh, coconut oil. Is it? Yep. Wow. That's what that was. Oh well, I still don't think it'll hurt it. I think it'll be fine. But I will melt my coconut oil next time. So, okay, now. I'm going to make my loaf of bread first and see, I'm going to tell you, putting this butter on my hands is working for them with this flour, this, this dough. So I'm thinking it was my dough 
that was because it that that made it uh, then see let me show this I don't know how well you can see that this is not staying smooth on top either that help no that that washed it out too Tommy okay. anyway it's it's not staying smooth when it rises up that'll be fine that'll be fine there's that one and I'm gonna go ahead and make my rolls and I'm gonna do the you know the way I do it I split it six and six three and three three and three and each one of these three times four is twelve so I just am constantly doing that in my head And I'm saying it again because when I've tried to teach people or have a helper come, they don't get it sometimes. And so it's like, you know, not everybody thinks the same way as I do. <laughs> so anyway. Or as quickly. That's just the way my brain works. So and then I'm going to roll these. And I'm making these. I want, uh, and my dough, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see? This was the top of the dough that got more air, which of course I had it covered, and this is the bottom. I don't know, it changed, it changed in the color. Yeah, which like I said, this is, I don't have a lot of experience baking with this flour, so. And I just keep rolling them in balls. We've got 22 people that got up bright and wow. early with us. And oh, I can't remember the person's name in Arizona. I saw the comment after the show, um, last night and she's like whoo seven o'clock in the morning i think she said it was was that ava that bought the cookbook i don't remember who it was i can't remember who it was now but they were in arizona well, ava's in arizona well it may yeah yeah because she had comments last night anyway i think she said that would be five her time or something like that well i was a uh, I, I i can feel you because i have been up since 3 30. i just woke up this morning couldn't go back to sleep so i will be having a nap this afternoon you see this one didn't turn out so pretty you know it's got that line in it it's no big deal um and i want to tell you this too i don't do it anymore because it's more labor intensive i would if i was going somewhere or whatever but to sell at the market i wouldn't but what you can do is you can take one of these balls and split it into three and make three balls and put it in a, a muffin tin and let it rise up and it makes the clover leaf roll and it's it's pretty and it makes a nice presentation but like i said you know i'm not going to do that for the farmer's market okay now this i'm going to make i'm going to make me a small loaf in this little pan of cinnamon sourdough so tams what time is it there what what's uh what time is it in oz why do you say oz that's just a, one of the colloquial terms for... Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think. She may say, what are you talking about? And see, I wasn't thinking about doing this on two loaves, but I think I'm going I'm to have enough. And, you know, this bread is not a super sweet bread. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, but uh, I think it'll be a good breakfast bread. I don't, pref I don't really like something super sweet in the morning. Of course, they can make it as sweet as they yeah. want. All right, then we're gonna uh, roll it again, like. And see, it was too long. You just need, did y'all see that? It was, it's a little too long for this pan. I just squished it up together, no big deal. It's 10 o'clock at night. Uh, oh, wow. Well, that's the so, way. It's almost bedtime then. That's good. It's not It's not 2 o'clock in the morning. We catch you coming and going, Tams. <laughs> now, I, I thought about doing this um, because we started talking about doing um, making some hummus. And so, hand me a dry paper towel, please. I thought about um, seeing how it'll work making, like, some pita bread out of the sourdough. But then I thought about, well, you know, I'm trying to do this double rising because of the extra fermentation. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I thought, well, how can I do that? Because normally when you make, when I make the pita bread, I do it in a black skillet, I press it and I put it in the skillet. 
I'm going to let this rise some. It may not rise as long as the bread because I don't want a fat piece of pita bread, but I'm going to do, I'm going to try doing like six pieces of it, and I'm going to use flour on my little press. And Tommy, uh, tell them where they can find that. <laughs> I didn't forget, I forgot what you told Oh yeah, the, uh, you know, the normal language is we'll put a link in the description. Well, there's a link in the description that says in Patty's Kitchen. And what that does is take you to a list on Amazon of, uh, it's just a lot easier uh, to have one link to a list on Amazon and, and we just add things that Patty uses in her kitchen to that list. So if you click the link in the Amazon description that says in Patty's Kitchen, uh, you'll come up with a long list of the stuff that she uses and, and loves every day. All right, I'm just going to put a little bit of the flour in here because these balls are, you know, they've had oil on them and everything. And so I'm just going to roll each one in the flour a little bit. And I've never done pita bread with the sourdough, so this may be a flop too. So, like my, I'm afraid my white bread may be a flop, so. Mm. Okay, and this is my little press. This is why, this is why I was asking him about that because I had him uh, put the link for this because I love this. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't get it from Amazon. I had it in my cart. I had it in my cart for years. And uh, honestly, I think I had it in my cart for years because I really, really wanted one. But uh, then the shipping was more, and I, like Tommy said, that was before Amazon Prime also. This is a Ziploc bag, by the way. I quart size, and I've cut the top of it off. Um, and I'll sprinkle a little flour on here, too, and close it to get it on both sides. Now I'll put my little ball. And look, that was, um, remember, I had bread for a whole lo a dough for a whole loaf. I split it in half, and I made one mini loaf. I see I could be making six rolls with this, but I'm going to try six pitas. But anyway, we went to Oregon to visit my oldest son, and he brought us to the farmer's market there. And it's the, was it downtown? Is that the one? But it I was think so. Huge. Massive blocks and blocks. I mean, just and just gorgeous. Hundreds of, of vendors, thousands of people, and. They had somebody there. Oh, wait, let me see. And see, I'm not sure how I need to do this. I think I'm going to put, I'm going to use the spray and see what happens. But um, anyway, they had uh, somebody there selling fresh made corn tortillas and he was selling the press. And I the price of the press was the same as Amazon or a little less. I can't remember now exactly. Seemed like it was 17 something now that I think about it. But anyway, he, uh, I didn't have to pay shipping. And because I've stuck that sucker in my suitcase and brought it home. So I was so pleased to get my tortilla press. All right, and there it is. And I put oil on here. I may be making a mistake with that. I don't know. But like I said, I had never done it before. So we'll see. She's got guts, ladies and gentlemen, trying something new right here on live TV. <laughs> oh, well, I've had my starter flop. Yeah, I may twice. have my white. My, no, just oh, yeah, twice. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Well, maybe twice. And I may have my white bread, my white sourdough flop, but I'm sure y'all will share y'all's uh, experiences if y'all have ever had any of that stuff. Well, the set, the, that first one, I squished it twice, I don't, or pressed it twice, uh, but I'm only doing this one once because I think it needs to stay a little bit thicker. We so. treat bonsai down here, we call it a tortilla squisher. Yeah. <laughs> Patty Family Roots Farm wants to know, can you use coconut flour or almond flour for the sourdough bread? You know, I don't know. Um, I may, if I have an issue, being able to eat this bread, I might can let you know. Uh, there is recipes out there for gluten-free uh, sourdough bread. I have not tried any of them. In so, theory, you can. It just depends on, we just don't know how, how active it would be. You know, I just, I guess after this experiment here, if I can't have this bread, I guess I'm going to have to really start experimenting and figure out how to make my own gluten-free bread because, you know, I've got a few recipes, and, and I, I've got a recipe for a flatbread, 
that I like, and I want to do a video on it, but, you know, I want a loaf of bread. I want a loaf of bread, now I'm going to try and move this, that really may mess it up. I want a loaf of bread that I can slice and eat. Not the kind that I've been buying at Walmart. I, you can get some sourdough, I mean some, some bread at Walmart, but I want to be able to make my bread. So, Tell us what you mean by that, Billy Branch. Billy Branch says she thinks her starter died last night. Are you smelling something bad, or is it just not as active, or what? <laughs> Tam says, you go, Patty. Something's got to work sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. right. And the cost to experiment is minimal, you know, well, so. Not with gluten-free flour. Well, here. yeah, but well, still. Well, this kind. This, this is, ex but y'all could, if I can't eat it, y'all could eat this. But the white flour that I experiment with, I'm not losing much. But, um, yeah, this other kind is uh, rather expensive. Mark asked, how can you tell if it's, if it's died? Well, for, you know, Ooh, he, uh, he, if, he didn't see our, if, my, if, when mine died. If you saw, what was it, day two or day three or I something? Was, I think it was day three. She had tried the einkorn wheat without uh, sugar because of the old recipes don't call for sugar. And it sat in the sun. I forgot that the sun came in. And right what I recommend you do is go find a possum that's been dead on the side of the road <laughs> about two days. It was so bad. Get down close as you can to it and take a deep breath. And that's how you know that that's how we knew that starter had died because that's about what it smelled like. <laughs> I didn't tell y'all that day about this, but I can't, it was over there on that part of the kitchen. You know, that's where I did the starter and everything. And I was buzzing around getting all my stuff ready and everything. I kept smelling something that stunk. And well, I've never seen a mouse over here in Mama's house, but I mean, we're in the woods. There's mice around, you know? And I, I kept smelling something that stunk, stink, something stinking. And so I found, I started moving my mixture. I started moving everything around because I thought there's a dead mouse up here because it stunk so bad. <laughs> it was my starter. Oh. All right, and Billy Brand said, uh, no foam. No uh, foam. I don't know that that means it's dead, huh? Well, what I would do, um, I would go ahead and uh, feed it and watch it and see how it does. Um, and how, but you know what, how much starter do you have? How much, how many, you know, is it, do you have a pint of starter? Do you have a quart of starter? How much do you have? Because there gets to a point when you get a certain amount of starter, you're going to need to feed it either twice a day or more because it's going to need more to eat. Yeah. Just, I mean, think about it as a child, a little bitty child does not eat as much as an adult. But as the child grows, it eats more. As you get more starter, you're going to have to feed it more. My starter that I have in a gallon jug, I'll feed it two cups of flour, two cups of water. Uh, and so then I would put uh, a cup of sugar. You know, d but anyway, doubling Absolutely. you know, and everything uh, and tripling because it's so much to be able to feed it. So, you know, it just that could be part of the problem. You may not have lost it, actually. And, and if, it's got, if it's gotten sour and it's starting to smell sour, what you might want to do, if, if it doesn't reactivate when you feed it, you might want to put a little bit of yeast in there to give it an oomph to get it going. Because, you know, you know how many days it takes to get to being sour. You know, and that's one thing with, the, uh, with my white bread. It does not smell near sour like the wheat does. She has about three-fourths of a quart jar. Yeah, it needs to be fed. If she's still feeding it the fourth of a cup of a flour, fourth of a cup of water, eighth of a cup of sugar, it needs to be fed at least twice a day and maybe even go up to feeding it a half a cup at each time. Or split it and, you know, feed it the, like we were doing it. So she can or, either... You know, you can throw it away, you know, or make, there's recipes for pancakes and biscuits that you can use. Yeah, again. if it doesn't smell bad, it's not going to hurt you. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, uh, so feed that thing. <laughs> All right, now here is my pitas they're ready that's flour you see on there just dry flour so i'm going to let this all sit and rise and hopefully oh oh let me tell you let me tell you this i will bake my pitas on i probably will bake them on 450 and i will watch them real close i may have to turn them over i don't know i've never baked them before i always do them on a, on a uh, iron skillet 
Um, so I'm going to do those on 450 if you're doing this with me. The rolls will be baked on 400 for 10 minutes. And the breads, the, the, the normal size loaf of bread is going to bake at 350 for 30 minutes. The convection oven that I use, I do 25 minutes. Um, now, in this bread, the smaller loaf, is even this, the bigger loaf of bread, whether it's cinnamon or regular, is baked the same, 350 for 30 minutes. The, the smaller loaf of bread, 350 for 20 minutes. You know, and of course, your oven may, you know, differ than from mine, so it's always good to give it a check five minutes before, you know, it's supposed to be done, and it may take another five minutes afterwards, so... Anyway, I think that's all I have for you. So, and also, Tommy's not going to be able to film me baking it or when mine is risen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film it on my phone and send it to him where he can get it up for me. So. Jan says that hers went from having the liquid on top and no foam to having just foam. Mm -hmm. Am I feeding it enough? Um, well, uh, I'm going... Is that the same? That's not the same person. No. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm going back to if you're getting a lot of. It's okay if you don't have that liquid. Um, but you want the foam. The foam is what you want. That's showing that it's rising. It's active. Um, and somebody had said a comment about the liquid that that shows that it's starting to work. Um, but you're just going to need to watch it. Um, and once you get a lot of starter, I'm pleased. I've brought mine home, but I'm pleased with the amount of starter I have. I'm, I'm going to feed it again. I'm going to, and I normally feed mine in the mornings. I, I'll fed it at noon with y'all because that's when Tommy had his lunch time that he could film. Um, but uh, I feed mine in the morning, and I'm going to go ahead and feed mine again because, you know, I'm going to have these rolls. I'm going to have a few things, but if I like these pitas, I probably will want to put some of them in the freezer. So I'm going to want to bake bread in another day or two. So, and then after that, I may put my starter to bed, but I may not. I'll see, I'll see how much, you know, I use. But you, once you get uh, a pint to three quarters of a quart, you're going to need to feed yours more. And if you add a little yeast, you're going to need to feed it more. So. Family Roots Farm, you can uh, wants to know how much cinnamon and sugar to taste, oh. really. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I mix for that. I put um, two teaspoons of sugar to, no, 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 two tablespoons of sugar to one teaspoon of cinnamon and mix that up. And that did one big loaf and one small loaf. So, you know, just... Yeah, that's you a matter of experimentation yeah. and your taste buds. And if you if you pile on the cinnamon sugar too much, of course, a lot of it's going to come out when you roll it up. And when you cut it, it's going to want to fall apart rather than have gotten kind of a little gooey in there and stick together. So, you know, just, you yeah. know. It's finding the balance between uh, a strong enough taste that you like, but not too much that the mm -hmm. bread doesn't sort of absorb it or... Not absorb it, but like you said, it becomes... Not absorb it. You want it to absorb it a little bit because if it if it gets yeah. where it's dry in there, it's just going to fall apart. Yeah. A lot of people put it in a toaster. I want to toast mine. But um, anyway, um, but you just do it to taste also, however you however you like it. <laughs> Mark, Mark says, good thing we ain't neighbors. <coughs> we might have our nose pressed to that window with all that fresh bed break going... <laughs> Ah, are you going to bake the pitas, then freeze them? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll bake them first and then freeze them. Yeah. If, um, I, if I do it, you know, if I do that. That's oh, here's a good question uh, we haven't mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Five Branch Farms, ready to split theirs in half and put half of it in the fridge. Mm. Do I put a regular jar lid on it? Yes, you do. You cover, yeah, yeah. That's a good point that we haven't thought to mention. Yes, it's covered with a regular lid. And, you know, I haven't mentioned that either uh, as far as, you know, of course, you know, you want your, and I know this is my tinfoil one, but I'm just holding it up because it kind of looks like how it looked when I had my coffee filter. This is uh, flour in here. Um just flour, but if you were to put a regular lid on this when it had starter in it, 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 it has gases and stuff like that, and it can't explode. So yeah. that's why when it's out of the refrigerator, you never have a normal lid on it. But when you put it in the refrigerator to keep different smells and odors and, you know, to keep air from getting to it, you want to put it in the fridge with a lid on it. Yeah. So. Um, Jan asks, does the bottom part below the phone, or Jan's the one who had the, 
the all foam and no liquid on the top. And our question now is, does the bottom part below the foam get more liquid as you go? And I think well, that doesn't necessarily mean, uh, if I'm reading this right, Jan, you're not necessarily saying, does it develop a bigger layer of liquid? I think maybe you're saying, is it more, become more liquidy uh, as you go? I took it the opposite. That does yeah. it develop a larger area of liquid. Yes, it can. Let me see uh, my starter. Let me see how it looks in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see my liquid on here. Um, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Lean the top forward a little bit more. You can see it. Oh. Yeah. Yep. There's my liquid on top of my, uh, this is my sourdough for the market. I have seen it. Can you see this? My thumb right here. I have seen this amount almost have half liquid. It just, I guess it just depends on the process that it's going through at the time. I, uh, you know, I, I, I had said at, at one time that, you know, I know how to do some of this stuff and everything, but I don't know all the if, ands, and buts about it, though. So, you know, so I'm just, I'm just doing what I know to do, you know, and I don't know some of the whys and hows and stuff like that. So. All right. So the next thing that happens, Patty, you're going um, yeah, to let gonna, this rise. Yeah, we're going to let this double in size, hopefully, or just about double in size. And then we'll preheat our oven and everything. And let me remind you that the bread loaves are baked on 350. The bigger loaves are baked for 30 minutes. The small loaves are baked for 20. The rolls are baked at 400. And what I do is I'll bake my rolls and my pita first um, because they take the rolls take 10 minutes. The pitas are not going to take that long, I'm sure. I'll have to just watch them. I don't have any idea. I'm thinking two or three minutes, but I don't know. I'm baking them on 450. And I'm going to bake the rolls on 400, and then I'll turn it down and bake my bread. So I think that's uh, that's everything. So Yeah, Tams is going to send uh, pictures. Uh, do that. So if anybody wants to send pictures yeah, of their updates, you can send it to bread at aldermanfarms.net. Bread at aldermanfarms.net. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way we'll be sure to get them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and please let me know how it's going. And like I said, I'm going to film this and... Uh, send it to Tommy and he can do what he does to put it on there. So can work my magic. <laughs> yeah, work his magic on, on the video. So, all right. Uh, anyway, so, but I hope you have a great day. And I know some of y'all are not up to the point I am. And, you know, if your starter is not looking great, I would suggest not doing the bread like I did. I went ahead and did the bread. Tommy's not going to be available to me to be do, doing the filming uh, this next week. And I knew it was going to be ready. My wheat one was for sure ready i would typically i would not have used that white starter that i had i'm just doing it to go through the motions and i hope it'll make bread but if it don't it's not a big deal but i did want to show you mixing it up with the mixer and also mixing it up by hand so anyway i went ahead with it but if it was if your starter's not doing great i would say hold off till you get an active starter so all right, well, now we've reached the point of the process that's always the most stressful for me, and that is trying to figure out which one of these confounded processes to stop first <laughs> so that we don't get cut off in the middle of a sentence and also so you're not still watching us 30 minutes after we finish the video. So. Yeah, yeah, he told me last night, okay, we're off. And we weren't. <laughs> we weren't. I said, sure? yeah, we're off. All right, so... Um, uh, Hang with us, and we will see you guys again and let you know what we're going to plan for our next live thing-a-majig. Y'all have a great day. Thank y'all for watching.